Doris Ledesma, and I am the curator of Tropical Fruit at Fairchild Tropical Botanic Garden. So we decided to celebrate the wild mangoes this year because we have 600 hybrids and it's time that our community is aware about our research projects. I want our visitors to see mango when they walk out in a different way. Mango is not just a fruit, it's a nostalgic fruit. It's a fruit to dream, it's a fruit to remember to get connected with the roots, with everybody that comes to the festival, they just get immediately connected. Oh, this is the mango that remember, remind me my grandfather. I want them to be happy and to learn how to grow it here and pass all this heritage to the new generation, to their children and their grandchildren. Well, this is our 25th anniversary here at Persian Tropical Botanic Garden and everything started probably a hundred years ago. Uh, our pioneers in those days, that was Dr. David Fairchild, and he used to like mangoes as well. And in those days, I'm talking about probably 1900s, um, we, we, we had mangoes in those days, that were the mangoes from the pilot, the turpentine mangoes, the very tiny ones, that arrived here probably in 1700s by the pilots. They arrived to uh, Key West, uh, also all the way to Tampa and in the other coast and some of them they ended here in the side of the Miami River. Uh, there are some beautiful pictures in our archives that tell the story about these mangoes grown by the Seminoles. Later on the, Dr. David Fairchild, he was a plant explorer. He, had, he was a visionary. He wanted to reveal the industry of the U.S. based in agriculture. So he was hunting and collecting the best that he could to try to rebuild our economy here in the U.S. And he actually did great things. And he brought in 1900s, early 1900s, 35 grafted mango trees from India. So they came in the, by the ocean. In those days, it was completely different than now. And we have internet and we very quick, we can reach anywhere. You have to go in a boat for probably two months, find somebody to do the translation, get the trees in the boat, and come over. So by the time that he arrived here, it was already winter. And Miami was a swamp, so he had to go to Washington, D.C. And in Washington, D.C., by the time that he came here, by the summer time, uh, just one made it. So that was the Mulgoa tree. And it was planted in some place in Coconut Grove. The tree made a big, a big tree. The fruit fell in the ground make a small tree and then that one produce fruit again. And during that tra transition, many seedlings start appearing in the, under the canopy. They were already mixing their pollen from the turpentine mango from the pilots that arrived earlier and this mulgoba. So one day, one lady was looking outside and she just look up because turpentine is a very tiny fruit just like that one. And the Mulgoa is not very colorful either. And what she saw was a beautiful fruit like this one. And she said, wow, what is that? It looks just like a mango, but it's not a mango. What is it? And, and he, she brought the fruit inside. And her husband was one of those groups of the pioneers and visionaries to rebuild the, the industry in the U.S. with Dr. David Fairchild. That was Mrs. Hayden. And that's how Hayden appears. That was a lovely story that I'd like to share with everybody because it's part of our heritage. After that discovery, everybody wants the red mango. So they were looking for other red mangoes. They discovered also Tommy Atkins, Keith, Kent, Valencia Pride, all these different beautiful mangoes that we have and we enjoy until today. And now the diversity is going even beyond of that. So we have in our living collection 650 different mango cultivars that they are um, the best of the heart of all these mango lovers in every country that I visit in my expeditions. So my job is very interesting, I will say, and I love it very much because I have to meet the best people, which are the farmers in every corner, in every country, and look for the best mangoes to fill our living collection. We have also 
mangos that are the ancestors of the mangos. These are the mangos from Borneo that we are celebrating this time with the wild mangos. Why wild mangos? So I have a couple here and now you are going to see why they are wild. So this one, for example, that doesn't look even like a mango, uh, is almost purple. It can be almost blue when you just harvest it because it has a natural wax that make it look like blue. And that natural wax is a protection for the mango to protect it itself from different diseases like anthracnose. And that we are trying to do is try to capture those genes from this wild mango and mix it with this beautiful hayden and try to come up with something that is resistant to diseases in a natural way. So we are not using GMOs, we are just putting together nature and help them out to meet each other. So what we are doing at the Fairchild Farm in our experiment, so we are putting, for example, the mango casturi, the blue mango, together with the Hayden, imagine the tree, we make a cage, we put bees, if they are close enough, genetically speaking, if they like each other, so they will, they will set fruit, otherwise they will abort. If this doesn't work, so we will make another cage and we will put it together with the other one. Or, in other cases, we are bringing flowers from this one to the cage so we can have the progeny. Right now, we have 600 different hybrids living and they are under research. Our goal is to uh, release at least five in, in by 2018 that we can recreate um, uh, the new generation of mangoes. Uh, I want a mango that is resistant to diseases, that is uh, healthy, that you can eat even the skin. In many of our cultures, we actually like the skin. And uh, you can eat mango in so many different ways, like green mangoes. Uh, there are studies and green mangoes have different properties. The compounds can be different, so they can be um, richer in vitamin C, for example. So we are doing all this uh, different research about how we can use the fruit and that's why all this event is about, is to educate our community that they are aware that mango is not just a fruit, it's, it's more, we get, we get all these people together and we have this celebration, this uh, wonderful event and we have people from all over and they just come for one reason, they love mangoes just like me. The base of the genetics of the mangoes that we have in our backyards so even in the supermarket, the mangoes that are coming to the United States are coming mainly from Mexico, Peru, Ecuador, and Brazil. Those are Floridian mangoes that were discovered under the canopy of the Mulgoba. They are very close to each other. When you have that genetic material so narrow, bad things start coming up. So what we are trying to do is incorporating all these genes is genetic resistant to diseases. Mangoes that can grow in the swamp. Mangoes that can grow in the hill. Maybe we can grow mangoes in Tallahassee. I would love to have mangoes for um, Canada. Eventually, we cannot reach that far, but at least for Tallahassee. So we are looking adaptation for different environment, uh, resistant to diseases, and a mango that is grown in clean agriculture that is safe for the new generation and for us. So red mango didn't exist before. We discovered the Hayden mango here in Coconut Grove. So um, everybody is looking for a mango like this. We want a mango that is perfect color outside and inside, that is free of fiber, that you can just easy to cut and enjoy. There are so many ways to eat a mango. I, I have fun sometimes with that because many people like me to slice them just like that. But the way that I grew up with, I like the mangoes that you can just take it in your hand, mush it until it gets very soft, make a little hole right here, and just drink it. That's the mango that I grew up with. But there are so many different fancy ways to do it because mango is so adaptable. So, uh, there are other mangoes, for example, like this one that I'm talking about in the beginning, it's the wild mangoes. The, the, the races of the mangoes, you can tell also how they smell. So, 
This one, for example, it has so fragrant, so sweet. It's almost, uh, this is the mango of the orangutans. I call it the mango of the orangutans. I like to relate things for children, especially, because the orangutans in the wild, they go, this is a dominant tree that means that it's a very tall tree. The orangutans go every day and break branches of the trees and they make a nest in the top of the tree to guardian the forest. And of course they have to have one of these one mangoes. And they want to get a mate, so they can, they, they, they can attract the male just with the smell of the mango and they start rubbing themselves in the mango. So, and then they eat the fruit, they disseminate the fruit, and they go to the next day to the next tree. So I think this is, a, a, and it's green outside. This is how the mangoes used to look like, yellow or green, never uh, red. So what we are doing with our breeding program is we are trying to get the, the, the resistance of, uh, of the lowlands. This mango grows in, in the swamp, basically, together with mangroves and we can combine it with the mango that is from South Florida that it grows in, 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 in rocky soils. And it's a, it can be, you can grow this mango in different places now. So uh, this is the other white mango that is the blue mango that is also very different the flavor. It's, 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 a, it's a wide diversity of flavors of the mango. The mango that we recall that we have the idea that is a mango should taste like is like the Hayden mango, but there are other ones. This one tastes more like lychee with passion fruit. It could be a different market for this kind of fruit. And it's orange inside, so I'm going to open that one. So I'm trying to create a way to use how to, how to market this kind of fruit. So I like these tiny fruits too, to open it just like a flower. So And this is one of our hybrids that is combined with one of the Floridian mangoes with the wild mangoes. So this is our first one. So, but we are going to, uh, we are looking for larger fruit that is at, at least one pound. This is too small still, but it has the, the, the flavor of the wild mangoes. It's, and also it's very fragrant. It's not like the Floridian mangoes. And they are sweet, but this one is very powerful. Like, like the queen. So I know that uh, you are the mango person, but what's your second favorite fruit? Um, you know, I like jackfruit, jackfruit a lot yeah. because as I, you probably record that before, mango is not just a regular fruit. It's a nostalgic fruit. It's a, it's a fruit for your soul. Yeah. But also jackfruit, I, I will put it in that category. With the difference that jackfruit is, some people just like it so much or people just don't like oh it goodness. at all. So those hard feelings, I like it very much. People are so passionate, there's just no way. I'm not going to eat that.